In this video, we're going to have an in-depth look at congruency of triangles. Shapes of which the corresponding angles are the same size and the corresponding sides the same length are called congruent shapes. These figures then have exactly the same size and shape and can fit on each other. For congruency, we make use of the symbol of three equal lines. And in grade 9, we specifically focus on congruent triangles. As an example, here we have two triangles where the corresponding angles are all the same size and the corresponding sides are also the same length. Therefore, we can write down that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. When writing down the second triangle, it is important to make sure that the angles correspond with the angles you wrote down for the first triangle. So because I started with A, which is equal to D, I have to write D first. Next, I chose to write B, and B is the same size as E in the second triangle. And finally, we have angle C, which corresponds with angle F. But for congruency of triangles, it is not necessary to know that all six measurements, the three angles and the three sides, are equal. Different combinations of only three of these measurements are needed to be able to say that two triangles are definitely congruent. Let's go and have a look at these minimum requirements. The first three measurements that are sufficient for you to be able to accept that two triangles are congruent is when the three pairs of corresponding sides are equal. And for this, we're going to make use of the abbreviation SSS. In this example, we are given three pairs of corresponding sides that are equal in length. And because this is one of the minimum requirements for congruency, we can make the conclusion that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. And the reason for this will be that we have three pairs of corresponding sides that are equal. And even though we were not given any information about the angles, we can now accept that because of the congruency, angle A, which lies in between the sides of 4 and 8 units, will be equal to side D, which also lies between the 4 and 8 unit lengths. We can also then say that angle B, which lies between the 4 and the 5 unit lengths, will be equal to angle E in my other triangle, also lying between the same two sides. And finally, angle C, lying between 5 and 8, will be the same size as angle F. Knowing that the three pairs of corresponding angles are the same size, however, is not a minimum requirement for congruency because you can draw a very small triangle and a large triangle with exactly the same corresponding angle sizes, but they are not congruent. The one triangle is an enlargement of the other, so they have the same angle sizes, but not side lengths. The second option of minimum requirements for congruency is when we have two pairs of equal angles and one pair of sides. So because in our example, we have two pairs of corresponding angles being equal, as well as one pair of side lengths being the same, we can say these two triangles are congruent. So now we can accept that the remaining pair of angles are the same size, and also the remaining sides. So AC lying in between the 71 and 64 angles will be the same as side FD. And finally, side AB will be the same length as side ED. A third option for minimum requirements will be two pairs of sides and one pair of angles. So here we have the two pairs of sides that are equal and then also a pair of angles. And in this minimum requirement, it is very important that the angle you have is an included angle. That means it lies in between the two sides 
that you have. And that is why when writing the reason, we also put the angle in between our two sides. Our fourth and final option for minimum requirement is when we have a right angle, the hypotenuse, and another pair of sides. So in our example, we once again have two pairs of equal sides and a pair of angles, but because the angles are right angles, it does not have to be the included angle. Let's go and have a look at an example of how we can use these minimum requirements to prove a pair of triangles congruent. Prove that the pair of triangles are congruent. To prove triangles congruent, we now need to find some of our minimum requirements. Here we are given that in both triangles we have a 10 cm side, so we have a pair of sides. Both triangles have an angle of 104 degrees, which means we have a pair of angles. And then it's indicated that side CB is the same length as FE, which is another pair of sides. This is one of our minimum requirements, so we can prove these triangles congruent. Remember that the angle should be an included angle in this case, and here it is because B is in between the two known sides. Now we need to write this down properly. I'm going to start off saying which two triangles I'm working with. Triangle ABC and triangle DEF. Next, we need to write down our three pairs of measurements that are equal. Firstly, we said that side AB is equal to side ED or DE, and that was given to us. Next up, we know that angle B is the same size as angle E, and that is 104 degrees, and that was also given to us. And finally, we know that side BC is equal to side EF, and that was also given to us. We add the reason that these were given, because in the next video you will see that we can also make use of other geometry reasons. And now that we have our three minimum requirements, we can make the conclusion that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Remember to ensure that the corresponding angle's letters are in the same positions here. Finally, we need to also supply a reason for this congruency, and that is side angle side.